first time when we went to Abbey Road Studios to record that song, Love Me Do. I mean, we were pretty nervous, you know, we were kind of young kids. Yeah. When I hear the record, I can still hear the nervousness in my voice. The year is 1962. The Cuban Missile Crisis casts a shadow over the world. The Berlin Wall is in its second year. We say goodbye to Marilyn Monroe. But it's not all doom and gloom as the twist becomes the latest craze to get the pulse racing. This is also the year the Beatles record a debut single, Love Me Do. But first of all, there's someone that needs impressing. George Martin at EMI, Parlophone Records. Brian Epstein walked into my office with this little disc and said he had this fabulous group that he wanted me to listen to. And I put the record on and listened to it. And I said, OK, they sound interesting. Uh, when can I see them? He said, well, they're in Liverpool. I said, well, you'll have to bring them down, won't you? I said, if you like, I'll allocate an afternoon in the MI studios and I'll listen to them in the studios. No good listening to this little disc here. Because, in fact, it was pretty awful. So they came down and they performed for me. And I immediately liked them. I thought they were great characters. Um, I wasn't sure what to do with them, but I liked them. Ken Townsend, technical engineer on duty on the day of the June 6th audition. George had arranged this, this session on the 6th of June 1962. Norman looked out the window and he says, what the heck have you got here? Look down, there's these four young lads walking through, all looking identical. And so Norman and I walked down to the studio and um, chatted to them. And um, I was immediately taken back by their sense of humour and um, the way they were and the fact they all look the same. They were like four clones and I was quite knocked out by their Scouser accent. And I got on quite well with them actually and um, we set up their equipment and George Martin then arrived upstairs here and we started recording and I think it was Best In Me Mucho the first one we did. And there was this terrible sound from the bass guitar. You can describe it really as a farting sound really. And we tried several things to cure that. Norman Smith lowered the level downstairs and raised it up here to no effect. And so George basically said, look, unless we can do something about it, we'll have to abandon this session. We can't um, put on tape this dreadful noise. So they went to the um, canteen and had some tea. I had this idea about getting the loudspeaker out of echo chamber one and getting a TL12 amplifier. I fixed up this thing and, and tried it all and lo and behold it actually worked. Uh, that was the start of my involvement with the Beatles and at the end of the session I was quite knocked out by them. In fact, not their musical but them as people. I spent a few hours with them in Abbey Road and fell in love with them because they had great charisma. It wasn't at all obvious that they could be songwriters at that stage because their songs were pretty awful. They, even then, Love Me Do was the best thing. But they had great charisma and um, irreverence too. By August, drummer Pete Best was out and Ringo Starr was in. With the exception of Pete Best, George Martin and EMI were suitably impressed. So the new look Beatles departed Liverpool for London on Tuesday the 4th of September to attend a recording session at EMI Studios. Ken Townsend. The Beatles have booked him for September the 4th to do their first session. And they did some rehearsals in the afternoon in number three. And then they recorded here in number two. And um, they did Love Me Do, How Do You Do It? And a couple more, I think, asked me why. But funny enough, although Love Me Do was made as the single, I took about a week later, the master, which was going to be How Do You Do It? I don't think many people know this, actually. I took it down to the factory and then they decided not to use How Do You Do It but to use Love Me Do. So on September 11th we did another one in number two when we had a session drummer in play to Ringo and Ringo played tambourine. But that was the start of it, that was the start of the Beatles and it was released in October and I think it went to number 17 in the charts which wasn't great. At that time they were not big artists at all. The first record did very well, it sold 100,000 copies. That was Love Me Do. The best thing was it came to the charts in two days and everybody thought it was a fiddle because our manager's stores send in these, what is it, record things. Return. Returns. And everybody down south thought, ah, oh, ha, oh, he's buying them himself or he's just fiddling the charts. You know? He wasn't. It was bought by the kids. I mean, we had a big following. It got to whatever, 17 within the following weeks after it came out, and I don't recall what happened to then. It probably just died up and went, but it meant the next time we went back to EMI, they were really more friendly. Oh, yeah. hello, lads, come in. Yes, okay. 